Hello, everybody. I have had a little, little bit of time off. No broken legs. I think no. this is great coming back from skiing, Belinda. I feel good about it. Yeah. Do you know what else I feel good about? Go on, what you The fact that any minute now, somebody's going to click on this subscribe button here and, and dingle go, the dingle ding, dungle ding, bell. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Because we've got a great show today. We've got so many great guests. We really have. But before we do that, roll them titles. Yeah. I feel complete now, I'm back too. And you know who else we've got? Who? We have got Berry Pride, which is very, very exciting. We've got LGBT Cricket. We have? Yes. I'm excited. I know. I love a game of balls, you know. <laughs> I really do. I'm quite partial to it. I really am. Look, I have got my Pride t-shirt on. I've yes. got my Pride shoes. Look, rainbow. Rain you're, you're just a rainbow. I am a ray of sunshine and a rainbow of light. And speaking of which, somebody that knows everything about every ray of light that's going on over on our little square boxes that we watch at the corner of our televisions is our Hales. Hales, what have you got for us today? Oh, well. So, I have, what I want to talk about is reality TV to start off with because um, it's a while till this next series, but the casting team are on the lookout for this year's contestants for I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. And Ant will be back presenting with Deck as well. Former footballer John Terry is actually rumoured to be in this year's series along with Gemma Collins from The Only Way is Essex, Georgia Steele, Kate Garraway and Michael Lavelle from Corrie. Now, who would you like to see? Drop me a tweet, at hey Kate. Now, more rumours as to who shall be joining this year's Strictly Come Dancing, they include Chris Evans, Hugh Edwards, Vogue Williams, Deborah James and Michael Caine. Now, him, I'd love to see. Now, moving over a little to sci-fi, and Alex Kingston has suggested she wants to go back into Doctor Who as River Song. I'd love her to, actually. Now, Doctor Who fans like me will be able to soon step inside that famous TARDIS in a new virtual reality film. It's called Doctor Who Runway, and the viewer will play a companion to Jodie. It's exciting. Now, over to Netflix, and some of the top films to be released are Crazy Stupid, starring Emma Stone, Ryan Gosling, and Steve Carroll, Full Metal Jacket, which is about the Vietnam War, Nocturnal Animals, which is based on the book Tony and Susan, and Mudbound, which revolves around racial tensions and family bonds just after the Second World War. Now, one of the most talked about documentaries on Netflix at the moment is, of course, the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. I can't believe it's actually 12 years since that little girl was taken. Um, and I do hope that this documentary will uncover a little bit more truth, let's say. Well, that's it from me, and I'm going to catch you next time. Bye. I'm Emily Fleishman here for Your Manchester in Media City to meet Kimberly from Heartwork, a sustainable fashion brand. She ethically sources all of her clothes to give your items a new lease of life. So tell us a little bit about where Heartwork came from and how it was born. Yep, so um, I've been working as an actor for 10 years, as you know. Um, out of frustration and lack of work, I decided to get a sewing machine to be creative and realised that I could actually sew. Started making a few bits then made an uh, LGBT pride inspired dress for soap awards which then caused a bit of controversy as you do um, and yeah so then ASOS saw me and it sort of like built momentum so never really something that I planned to happen but yeah something I'm very glad it has. And why did sustainable fashion, um, why was that what was attractive to you about the whole brand itself? Why didn't you just go down the new fashion design route? Because you have to follow patterns and, you know, as an, like a learner sewer at the start, it's probably better to tear apart and rework. But most of all, I, I, that's what I want to work with, pre-existing clothing, because nothing should be like, you, obviously you know about fast fashion at the minute and what it's doing to the, the earth, the, the whole world in general, so I just... It's not an option for me. Like, I only work with roll ends. I only work with pre-existing. It doesn't have to be vintage either. It could just be like, you wore it, now I'm going to wear it. And that's the way it is, and that's the way I want it to always be. So everything's only ever made once, nothing replicated ever twice. So when you buy something from Heartwork, no one else will have it in the world. 
Which is amazing because I think in today's world, as you said, fast fashion, people have 10 carbon coffees. You know what it's like yeah, turning yeah, up to a party yeah, and there's always. 10 people in your dress and you've got to run home because yeah. <laughs> you don't Someone want to be wearing the same thing as something else. So yeah. not only are you giving people the individuality and the creativity, but you're also reusing fast fashion. So it's not just going to end up in, you know, landfill two minutes after someone's worn it on a night out. Yeah, and this is it. And I think that... Um, Back in the day when we, when I was in school, all I wanted to do was fit in and I used to want to wear almost what everyone else was wearing. And I th feel like we're all stepping away from that now and we'll do anything to stand out. Don't know if that's Instagram world, don't know what that is about. But for me, I'm like loud, proud and this is what I am and this is what I wear. And yeah, it's an expression of me and I think that's what clothes should do for people. And you're wearing one of your looks today. Do yes, you I am. Can talk a little bit about where these items came from, how they were designed? OK, so I'm a bit short. Um, so I've made my own pants today, which basically means that when I walk, I'm not going to trip over them. And then this jacket is um, inspired by Drake. So this is an old T-shirt from Drake's um, tour, taken off. Now, the arms here as well can also be detachable, so I've done put that on there. So if I wanted to have a little waist jacket, a cord, if not, I can have like this full jacket here. I can have one arm, one off. So the top is um, reworked. So basically, this is being this was my friend's t-shirt. He was like, "Do you want some t-shirts?" Yes, I do. Recut it up, and then I've done a sort of it all wraps around you. So very like festival inspired. Do you know what I mean? That sort of like young trendy thing. You can have it anyways. You can have it wrapped around your thighs if you want to. Um, but yeah, so it's just basically it's like fits your size as well. So you know, with the weight around the waist, um, you can make that fit you perfectly. So, um, and one of the other looks that we've got modelled today by Lisa, um, yeah. talk me through that. So Lisa is wearing a reworked Puma um, vintage top, so it's American football wear. The signs are coming off slightly from it, but that doesn't mean that it can't have a second life. Cut it off, make a belt from it, add a skirt, boom, she's got like a little ball gown going on. Yeah. And similar to your jacket, you've layered it with one of these creative denim jackets. Talk me through that. Yep, so this one's Star Wars inspired. It's got two orange panels to match um, the, the Star Wars slogan. So if you're a Star Wars fan, that one's for you. And again, pulling on that retro theme and being able to make it individual to your own likes and dislikes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you want like an egg and spoon on there, we can do that for you. So what I'm really getting from Heartwork is it's very much about versatility, it's about longevity, it's about individuality as yeah, well. So individual definitely. fashion and, yeah. and going from season to season to season and answering that problem, which is massive at the moment about fast fashion. Mm -hmm. Charity shops are getting inundated. They can't actually handle the amount of fashion. Yeah. I think it's the Mary Kondo effect when everyone's chucking stuff out into charity yeah, shops. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. actually charity shops can't take it and it's ending up cheaper to go into high street brands and buy individually new items yeah. than it is to buy second hand and it's such a shame because yeah. it is impacting the environment so is that what Heartwork sort of stands yeah, for? Yeah it is and also at the, the minute the vintage wear is really in but so much so that these charities are getting this stuff in and then they're, have, they're bumping the price up which is great they're making more profit however it's people are selling it online vintage wear at the minute at such extortionate prices so it's actually cheaper to buy something old than new like you just said. Mm. I do think that you know sustainable fashion brands like this are the way forward with fashion it's more ethical it's more sustainable and it's so nice to know that it's born and bred here in Manchester with hard work. Thank you so much Kimberly. it's Thank been an you. absolute pleasure talking to you today. Thanks. Well, it is almost upon us that season where there is an abundance of pride. Yes. My favourite time of the year. I call it the gay Christmas, to be <laughs> honest with you. I really do. I love it's it. It's just a lovely time. Everyone is feeling the love and there's some great, great things and events on around the city and on the outskirts as well. Well, there is because they're not just around anymore. They are literally everywhere you everywhere. go. And they're all equally wonderful events. And one person that's going to tell us about a particularly wonderful pride is there this gentleman, he's called Mr Tony Malone, and he's going to tell us all about Berry Pride. Welcome. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's going to be amazing. It's, it's going to be immense. It's going to be amazing. It is. It's beautiful because, it, like you say, with the weather, you've got the spring, you've got the birds, it's what you want. Uh, it's the third Berry Pride as well. So it's, it's, oh, it's been going through the years as a parade through Berry. This is now, it's getting bigger. It's branching out. More people are coming. So Why do you think more nice. people are coming? I think, to be honest, it's, there's a little bit of a kickback from Manchester Pride mm -hmm. where it's quite inaccessible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I was lucky enough to MC for Super Josh last year on their float, but then after that, after the parade and everything, I started to go and buy a ticket and then go in and then you can't move and then it's a million pounds for a pint. So yeah. it's, uh, I think when, all over the country now when you see it, because I know Rochdale Pride have got a Pride event coming up as well, um, I think they're going to be the future. Well, I've got to say, I'm only around the corner from Berry. I actually went to Berry College. Yeah. 
I've not been to Berry Pride though, so I need to come this time. But what what can I expect? Do you have a parade? Whereabouts do you go? Is it near the Rock? Where where where, where what's it about? It is basically um, Saturday the thirteenth of April. All starts off ten a.m. at uh, the Elizabethan Suite, which is Berry Town Hall. Yeah. Um, there's some stalls inside. There's various different acts inside, uh, and then we do have a parade. The uh, Berry Business Lodge walking rainbow which goes all the way through Berry Town Centre, up by the rock, up by Barclays, back yeah. straight down, back through Berry Market and then straight in, straight onto the main stage, Barclays sponsored main stage, uh, where we've got a full day of great entertainment. We've got the lovely uh, Vivian who's hosting it. Yes. Us. Yeah, Vivian Lindsay, my future wife. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> straight in we've got some music from Tower yeah. FM. Yeah. Um, then we've got an amazing, one of the best pink tribute acts out there, lovely Vicky Jackson. Uh, she's going to do uh, Pink for us, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and then straight into the headliners this year is uh, S Club. <gasps> S Club? So, Shut S -Club. How many oh. from S Club is there? It's, there's three. There's three oh, now? S Club. It was going to be four, but I wanted to laminate the posters, so we ran out of budget. Ah. <laughs> three. Which three is it these days? Yeah, we've got Joe. Uh, we've got Joe. Oh, yes. He's got the flow. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. We've got Bradley. <gasps> oh. He's got the feeling. He's got the feeling. <laughs> Tina. No way, Tina. And she was the best dancer, Joe was the best singer, and Bradley, you know, he just did everything. You get far too excited about things. I, like you know, reach for the stars. <laughs> climb every oh mountain. God. I love them. Now, you're being sponsored by quite a few people as well, There's aren't you? Quite a lot. Yeah, Barclays are the main sponsor. They've been uh, brilliant. They've got into it. Um, Tesco's have just got involved as well. Oh, wow. I've just been down there today. They're decorating all the stores in the area, um, rainbowing it up and, and really going for it. It's, it's, become a really good community uh, event. A lot of people are getting involved and it's really, it's really how I think we've always sort of tried to do it where it's more family oriented and mm -hmm. it's tickets are free as well, which is a major bonus. And a novel idea. Yeah, because it's uh, it, like you can go to, I was at the London Pride earlier mm. last year and that was... You again, can spend a fortune at these oh, yeah. events, can't yeah, you? Yeah, you can either do that or a four night in Benidorm. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Know, which one do yeah. you want to do? Yeah. Um, but we've got a bit of a bonus as well this year because on the Sunday, uh, we've also got the rainbow train leaving from East Lanks Railway. Oh, That's and they're right. brilliant, the yes. East Lanks Railway. It's like with the steam trains yeah. and everything. That's fab. That's it. Yeah, five carriages of fun. Yeah. Four, because one of them's going to be a quiet carriage. Um, that's that. So that's uh, 25 past four. There's what, let me think, what have we got on? Uh, we've got an acoustic act on, on there. Oh. We've got uh, Vivian again, she's doing, uh, she's doing a bingo and she's going to be doing some songs and there's going to be a few other surprises on there as well. It's, uh, there's we drinks available. Got the choir with lots of with BYO. Must remember to say BYO. Yes. Bring your, Bring own... your own booze. Oh, yeah. I love it. And that's allowed. Yeah, because again, a lot of events don't let you bring yeah. your own drinks. And is it actually going to be moving that train then? Is it yeah. going to because it goes past Ramsbottom, doesn't it? Yeah, it's going up to Rossenstone. Yeah. Uh, and then come back. So, oh, fabulous. Yeah. I'm going to be going to both days and as you say you know it's a family event i've got two kids i love to take them to the manchester pride so i'm going to get myself down to berry and also bag myself a black pudding i think you should one more time when is it on uh, it's saturday the 13th of april yes. yeah and sunday obviously for the train tickets are available from um fatsoma.com berry pride you can go on to the berry pride.co.uk everything's on there or the facebook page and there's a link scroll right down and you can just click on for your tickets for pride which is which are free, and the tickets for the train, which is £6 for adults, £4 concession. Oh, really? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much thank for coming in. Thank oh, you for yeah. having me. Isn't it wonderful? Everybody's getting it out and about. And one man that loves to get out and about, and he doesn't seem to stop, is our titters. And he brings you the second part now of his Oddsall Hall uh, trip. Welcome back to Oddsall Hall part two. Last week, I left you with Cecily, Cheeky Sir John, and the White Lady. The hall has been developed over the years. 1251, the Manor of Odsall and the River Irwell. 1335, inherited by the Radcliffe family. 1400, a medieval timber dwelling with a moat. In 1510, a Tudor Manor House farm and country estate were built, including the Great Hall, with its wooden and plaster walls. It's quite fabulous. And, of course, it does have its landed gentry. Bayek, that rough needs stiffening. Where's my starch? In 1639, Sir Alexander built the brick west wing, contrasting his style to the timber body, yet somehow complementing it. The section to the right 
There's a kitchen with its smoking corridor and, well, a very handsome milkmaid. 1758. The hall becomes the property of Samuel Edgerton of Tatton, and times are changing. Around this time is the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. 1875 to 1900. The hall becomes surrounded by industrial housing and factories. 1897. The hall becomes a working men's club for Haworth Mill. The Manchester Ship Canal opens in 1894, bringing Salford docks to the front door. Between the war years, allotments and shelter for the destitute was the main use of the hall. In 1930, a community centre. In 1940, it suffered a little damage from fire and bombing. If you look back at the Manchester Blitz, it's lucky to be stood there at all. In 1959, a dilapidated Otto Hall was bought by Salford Corporation. It survived the council vote to demolish it by 30 votes to 18. And in 1972, opens as a period house and local history museum. It is now open to the public after a two year, six and a half million pound restoration was completed in 2011. Outside, we find the tended gardens, a small allotment, and a horse sculpted out of chicken wire. Inside, besides the great hall and kitchen, we discover the 500 year old bed, furniture of the period. Through the window, we see the high rise apartments, reminding us that we're in the 21st century. The hall also has interactive facilities for children of all ages. There's dear old Henry VIII giving out his orders, and of course, dressing up. That's always a winner. And of course, there's the lovely tea rooms. There are events aplenty, such as ghost nights throughout the year. Not forgetting a Mother's Day afternoon tea special, this coming Sunday, the 31st of March. Well, it's time for me to say ta-ta. So, ta-ta. I think I'll just go back and do a little bit more dressing up before I go home. You never know what he's going to get up to, do you? He like? gets around that man, doesn't he? He certainly does, but has he ever played cricket? I don't know if he's actually covered that on this show, has he yet? I'm not sure either, you know. Well, maybe we should introduce him to this pair because they've come along tonight. Welcome, we've got Amanda and Harry. Right. Is it the first LGBT team in Manchester yes. that we know of? This is brilliant. This is wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. So how did it all come about then? Basically, we're an established club already mm -hmm. and we've been going for over 100 years but when I was looking on the LGBT website I was looking at all the sports that could be available to members cricket was never listed and I thought that is not right and something needs to be done about that spoke to our committee and we said look we need to be at the forefront of this open ourselves up and be LGBT friendly give people a, a safe environment to play in and, uh, and that's how it's come about. It sounds amazing to be passionate about something as well. It really <laughs> does. Isn't it exciting? Yeah. And, and how has it gone, actually, then? What's the response been like? Well, we had 100% backing from the committee saying we should go forward, come on the show and Fab. go for it and try and become more LGBT friendly. So and you need more people then, don't you? Yes, yes 100%. And how would these people come about joining your club if they wanted to? Do they have to be good at cricket to start with? No, not, no, not at all. We're not. terrible. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Hold again, no idea. Well, that's me all over, so that would be fine, would it? So they can be total beginners, yep. and, and they just come along and see if they enjoy the atmosphere, yeah, is it? Yeah, definitely. You know, we're open to having people who just want to be a social member, they want to come down and watch and just be part of a club, or if they want to come and, and join in and be part of a team. We've got four men's teams, we've got one ladies' team, we've got junior teams. If people want to join, they can go on our website, which is aomclub.co.uk. Uh -huh. We've got Twitter, we've got Facebook. And okay. Instagram now, just yeah. on Instagram. Instagram. So all the pictures are on there? Yeah, we'll be getting this on the Instagram account. Oh, so fantastic. People can have a look at it then and yeah. see if it's better. Do they have to wear all the kit? Um, well, I think you have to wear to. some padding, don't you? Well, yeah, they don't need to have the kit initially. Yeah. We, we've got the kit at the club, so they can come down and just give it a go. What we'd suggest is they come down to a training session yeah. and just have a go. Can so you play got... cricket? No. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> and I'm captaining. You can. Uh, but we come down to a training on a Tuesday night for men's, and is it a Thursday night for, for the, the ladies, women's? Yeah. yeah. 
Right. And you're based near Sale, aren't you? Yeah, the place yeah. called Ashton? Ashton on Mersey. On Mersey. No, not Ashton Underline. Don't get confused. <laughs> Ashton on Mersey. Yeah. All right. So it's just on the outskirts then of Manchester, it is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's right on the tram line. Well, not on the tram line because that would be a bit awkward. <laughs> Does it cost them anything to come along? Not initially, Not no. no. No, because you want to attract members, don't you? You don't uh -huh. want to scare them off with saying you owe us this much money. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, you two can come down to start off with. We will. I'll, I'll, I'll I, I could see me wearing a cricket jersey with my makeup on a white jumper. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure that would be lovely. orange afterwards. It would be it? very orange neck. afterwards. And it's a great season, though, now to actually start it because, you know, we're into spring, yeah. you know, and then into the summer months. And as you say, it's not just one of those sports that you. Can, I, can get involved in only. You can watch it, because lots of people like yeah. to do that. It's a long sport, isn't it? Get yourself some Prosecco. Yeah. Just, just, Nick. Yeah. just got a brand new clubhouse, a new bar. Oh. And even if you bring your kids down, exactly. you can have a drink whilst watching your kids. Not too many, though. Yeah. It'd be very sensible. So it's a, a full family can come down oh, yeah. and fully yeah. enjoy. Yeah. How often do you meet? Well, all our teams, we play every week yeah. um, throughout the summer months. We tr but they suddenly come at the club every night, whether it's training or juniors. Um, it's just one big family, and we want to just invite more people into our family. That is fantastic. Really Talking is. about kind of doing the matches and stuff, so is it all competitive then? So you're not just playing against each other, you're playing like from teams, you know, all over the place. Is there like a league? Yeah. Yeah, there's a big league system uh, all the teams are entered into, even the juniors. But I think some of the junior games might be friendlies, but. You'd be, you wouldn't be thrown into the deep end if you you just come down to training and see if you have a look. Right, I'm, I'm getting yeah. down to the nitty gritty here. How long have you been playing cricket for? You're I've very knowledgeable about it. Playing cricket since I was nine, so oh, 13 there years. You go. See, he does know what he's talking about. I bet he knows what a googly is, don't you? Yeah, I do know what a googly is. <laughs> I've never known what a googly is. Tell what me what is a googly, googly is. So a leg spinner spins it out from a right hander. A googly goes back into the right hander. That just sounds like a night out on Canal Street. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> And leg before wicket. Yeah, leg before wicket, LBW. Yeah. I've got it. How's that? What? No, that's not what they say. Oh, do they? Yeah, they just say yeah. how's that, don't they? And we've got the right sport. That's yeah. right. It was even, <laughs> and I've just remembered when we last discussed um, cricket. Did we? It was when you said about the big heavy balls on your chin. Yeah. That's when I remember that one now. I it, did, yeah. It's all come back to me. Were so, they hard? They were hard, yeah. And they were saying I don't <laughs> like having get a them hard ball out. slapping me in the face. Remember that time. You know you can get red balls and pink balls now. Can you? Yeah. Hey, see, now it must be them. the temperature. It must. Hey, be it else. must be the temperature. <laughs> so once again, if people want to get involved in this, how do they do it? You can go to our website, which yeah. is www.aomclub.co.uk. You'll see all our um, social media links on there. Brilliant. Just give us a contact and we'll come down. I think as we get to the better weather, we should come down and fully do one of our um, experiences from there. I'm up for it. See like what say, it's all about. I'm not very good. I might be sitting kind of with my Prosecco and watching you all well, do it, especially our teachers. Offer, we do offer a Prosecco cricket night. Oh, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> you are year. there so much. That sounds like heaven. Year. It oh. sounds amazing. Well, thank you very much for coming in today. I'm, I'm quite excited yeah, about this. See you on the pitch. And it's sport, which is no, I normally don't get excited by sport. I don't like cricket. It's... I love it. Dear God. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for coming in. Now, we have got to wrap it up now, shall we? Oh, we do. We've but, got yeah. to wrap it up now. We're not here next week. We're not here next week, but I am super excited because we've got our live audience show. Yes, that's coming your way on the 4th of the 4th, everybody. Yes, yes, absolutely. So make a date in your diary. And before then, you know what to do. You need to click that button, don't you? And, and ring that dingly dingle bongo bell. And uh, then you can enjoy lots and lots of all your favourite episodes of Your Manchester. Manchester.